In this video, I'm just going to be reading the change log for the new Deluge 1.2 public firmware. If you prefer to read the change log on your own in silence, just check out the link in the description below. All of the changes that we've been seeing over time, it's very long, but don't get overwhelmed because these are just functions that you can look forward to learning when you're ready. If you're looking for basics, you can check my playlist. Even my earliest tutorial videos are still relevant because they did not change the original functionality. So here we are, 1.2 firmware change log. So here we see the sound engine, DX7 synth. And I added DX7 compatible synth type with support for importing patches from DX7 patch banks, as well as the editing of patch parameters. Next, audio clips, they added the ability to record from a specific track's output. So you can choose the input to track and then choose which one you want it to record from. Audio clips with monitoring or track effects active in the grid mode now support in place overdub using global MIDI loop layer commands. They added blend control to the compressors, FM synth filters, and added filters in FM synth mode. They're set to off by default, enable by changing them to any other mode using a menu. In MIDI, they added universal SysX identity response, including firmware version. For MPE, they allow changing MPEY output to CC1 to support more synths. Looks like they removed MPE zone auto learn. They also removed MIDI loopback feature, because that had a lot of bugs as well. It may be redesigned and reintroduced in the future. For the user interface, in general, the maximum zoom level for timelines has been increased. Now the maximum zoom point is the point where the entire timeline is represented by a single grid cell. They added the community feature toggle alternative playback start behavior. And what this does is it changes the behavior of the playback start. So this is really going to be great when you're working on longer patterns. So when this is on, it's going to start from whatever screen you're looking at when you press play. That's so useful. Added community feature toggle, accessibility shortcuts to make specific shortcut combinations more accessible for users with mobility restrictions. It's like they also removed the high CPU usage indicator feature. For menu user interface improvements, we have for toggle on-off menus, you can now view and toggle the on-off status without entering the menu by simply pressing on the select encoder while the menu is selected. Submenus on OLED are rendered with a bracket at the end to indicate that it's a submenu. Updated fonts and character spacing on OLED to provide a more refined and polished user experience. They also did some OLED display improvements, so they updated the OLED display for song view and arranger view to display the song name, current tempo, and current root note and scale name. They also updated the OLED display to stop scrolling text while playback is running. So next we have a big one, audio export. Added audio export and an automated process for exporting clips while in song view and tracks while in arranger view. To individual files. Press save and record to start exporting clips and tracks. Press back to cancel exporting and stop recording and playback. You can also start audio export via a new export audio menu found in the song menu accessible in song and arranger views. Start the export by entering the song export audio menu and pressing select on the menu item titled start export. It will exit out of the menu and display the export progress on the display. For recording, enabled toggling of metronome during record count-in. So for clip or section launching, a white playhead is now rendered in song grid and performance views lets you know when a clip or section launch event is scheduled to occur. The playhead only renders the last 16 notes before a launch event. You can also turn it off in the community features menu. The display now shows the number of bars or quarter notes for the last bar remaining until a clip or section launch event in all song views, grid, row, or performance. Now for audio clips, in general, they added the ability to select audio source from within an audio clip by opening the audio clip sound menu. So you press select and you select the audio source menu. They also added new actions menu in the audio clip sound menu. Time stretching, add a new shortcut to set the length of an audio clip to the same length as its sample at the current tempo. 
This functionally removes time stretching until the audio clip length or song tempo is changed. Press up, down, left, right knobs to set the audio clip length equal to the length of the audio sample. This action is also available in the audio clip sound menu. If you press shift, hold down left, right knob and turn left, right knob, you can adjust the audio clip's length independent of time stretching. Instrument clips, in general, added ability to sync LFO2, where LFO1 syncs relative to the grid, LFO2 syncs relative to individual notes. Added ability to set clip names, MIDI, synth, and kit clips can now be named. When in a clip view, press shift and name and enter the name of the clip. For kit, it's important to activate effect entire to name the kit clip. When on a ranger view with an OLED display, you're now able to scroll through the clip names when holding a clip pad and turning the select encoder. Velocity view, so added velocity view, accessible from automation view overview by pressing the velocity shortcut from the automation view editor by pressing shift or audition pad plus velocity or from instrument clip view by pressing audition pad and velocity. Velocity view enables you to edit the velocities and other parameters of notes in a single note row using similar interface to automation view. So for scales, added learning a user specified scale. Hold learn and press scale while in clip view. Notes from a current clip and all scale mode clips are learned as the user scale. This scale is part of the normal scale rotation, accessible with shift and scale and saved as part of the song. If another user scale is learned, the previous one is overwritten. Currently, each song can only have one user scale. If you enter scale mode from a chromatic clip, the implied scale cannot be represented by any of the existing preset scales. It will be learned as a user scale, overwriting the previous user scale. Song active scales toggles scales on and off from the shift and scale rotation for the current song. Active scales are saved as part of the song. So another menu default scale active scales sets the active scales for new songs. Now song view, song macros, added ability to create song macros to quickly switch playing clips from inside clip view without needing to go into song view. From song view, open the song menu and enter the configure macros menu to edit macros. From song view, open the song menu and then enter configure macros menu to edit the macros. Clip settings menu, holding a clip in song grid view or the status pad for a clip in song row view and pressing select brings up a clip settings menu. If you open the menu with an instrument clip selected, the menu will give you three options. Convert to audio, press select on this option to convert the selected instrument clip into an audio clip. The menu will exit after converting the clip. Note, for song row view, you can still convert an empty instrument clip to an audio clip the regular way by holding a pad for that clip in the main grid and pressing select. Clip mode, press select on this option to enter the clip mode menu so you can change the clip mode between infinite, fill, and once. Clip name, press select on this option to enter the clip name UI to set the name for the clip. If you open the menu with an audio clip selected, then the menu will give you two options, clip mode and clip name. Song grid view, creating new clips. Add a new mechanism for creating new clips and new tracks in song grid view. When you press a pad in a new track, a menu will appear asking you to confirm the type of clip you wish to create. The clip type selected to be created is shown on the display and is also indicated by the clip type button that is blinking. The default clip type for new clips can be configured in the settings. You can also configure whether the clip type or the next clip type you create should default to the last clip type you created. This helps with fast creation of multiple clips of the same type. If you just tap a pad quickly to create new clip, it'll create that new clip using that default if it's enabled. If you press and hold a pad, you can choose a different type to create a number of ways. By turning the select encoder to switch between the various clip types, you can create that clip type by pushing down on the select encoder or letting go of the pad. You can also do it the normal way by pressing one of the clip type buttons, Synth Kit, MIDI, CV. Or if you let go of the pad without selecting a different type, it'll create the clip using that last create type. And that's another menu option. If you press back before releasing a pad or selecting a clip type, it'll cancel the clip creation. 
These changes only apply to song grid view and not song row view. Converting empty instrument clips to audio clips. To convert an empty instrument clip to an audio clip, you will now use the clip settings menu described above. Loop and layering loop pads. Added community feature toggle grid view loop pads to illuminate two pads, red and magenta, in the grid view sidebar for triggering the loop and layering loop global MIDI commands to make it easier for you to loop in grid view without a MIDI controller. Entering performance view. Change the shortcut to enter performance view and song grid view from the pink grid mode to the keyboard button for consistency with the song row view and arranger view. Removed pink grid mode. So now in the grid mode, you're not gonna see the pink pad. Just press the keyboard button. Performance view. Updated performance view UI for exiting out of editing mode. While in editing mode, now you can just press back and you exit out to the previous screen. Arranger view, general, added ability to automate tempo in arranger view by turning the tempo encoder while recording. To delete the automated tempo, press shift and tempo. Added ability to rename MIDI tracks in arranger view. Playback start, change the behavior of the play button while in arranger view with cross screen auto scroll mode active. Pressing play while playback is off will now start playback from the current scroll position. Updated arranger view, clip pad rendering, Clips are now rendered more simply, which should also increase a range view performance, especially when using cross-screen mode. Clips are now rendered as follows. The clip head is rendered the clip color brightly. The clip loop points are rendered the clip color but dimly. The clip tails are rendered the clip's color but dimly and blurred. Keyboard view general, added ability to scroll keyboard view horizontally using left and right knob while editing parameter values in the menu. Chord layouts, new chords keyboard layout. The chord keyboard provides easy building and playing of in-scale chords. The chord keyboard provides two modes, a row mode inspired by Launchpad Pro and a column mode inspired by some of the features in the OXI one and others. New chord library keyboard layout. Chord Library Keyboard is a library of chords split up into columns, where each column belongs to a specific root note. Going up and down the columns will play different chords of the same root note. Voicings can also be changed with pressing a pad and pressing the left-right encoder and turning it. As the UI and implementation is still experimental, a community setting has to be activated to access the chord and chord library keyboards. Kits. Added ability to load a sample in the drum in the kit velocity keyboard view by holding a drum pad and pressing load or kit. Pressing drum pads in the kit velocity keyboard view will now update the drum selection so that you can edit the parameters of each drum with gold knobs directly from the kit velocity keyboard view when effect entire is disabled. So I will be doing more basic Deluge 1.2 firmware videos. In the past, my videos went a little avant-garde because I was so excited to show off how the new automation mode could go a lot further than ever possible. I wanted to show workflow videos that were not exactly step-by-step. -step. So this time I'll be trying to make less whacked out sounds and focus on step-by-step -step so that you can clearly see the workflow I'm trying to show. So please stay tuned. Thanks for watching.